タクのお子さんピアノがすごくうまいんですねオタクのお子さんピアノがすごくうまいんですね So what does that mean? オタク is like your お子さん means like you know politely saying your child オタクのお子さん Right? Your child ピアノ is like ピアノ、yeah. ピアノが is ピアノ is well not really but you get ピアノが、えー、すごい is very うまいんですね It's very good. So, oh, it, お宅のお子さん、ピアノがすごくうまいんですね。means, your child is very good at playing the piano. But what he or she probably really means is, oh, I can hear your child playing the piano during the day or perhaps during the night. It's really annoying. It's really loud. Can you get, make sure your child doesn't play that piano as much as he or she is playing right now? You know, that's. Kind of what it is. So, like, uh, uh, Japanese is really is a really subtle language.、Uh, it's a really interesting language, but it's really subtle and hard. That's why maybe it's you know hard to learn.、Um, you know, we have we have our peculiarities. We have our you know way of saying things. You know, then、um, I guess that's why you know it makes you know things you know a bit bit, bit interesting, right?、Um, and speaking of interesting, I have a very interesting Buddhist statue right here. It's a Fugen Bosatsu statue. But actually, it's not just a Fugen Bosatsu. It's a Suodai Myojin. It's a Kami. Well, it's a, it's a god. It's not actually a god,、um, as like in the context of,、um, you know, in, in Christianity or anything. Can you see it? Maybe I should move this one. Yeah. So, what is interesting about、um, Japanese Buddhism is that you know, Buddhism came to Japan around the 6th century.、Um, but before that, what did we like, do in terms of、uh, religion? You know, we believed in, we actually believed in you know, animism, for example. We believed that like, rocks, water, stone, you know, thunder, fire, you know, things like that, those you know, powerful, um, you know, powerful things in,、um, in, the, in nature. We thought that these were you know, very powerful, and, and because of that, we thought that there was kami residing, residing in them. Kami, when we say kami sama, we in Japanese, like I said, well, this way, Japanese is a very interesting language. So when we say kami sama, we sometimes refer to the, you know, Kami sama as in you know, Christianity or you know, other forms of you know, religion. Who have a, you know, like a, who have a, well, almost like an absolute God、um, type deity. And when we say Hotoke sama, we, we refer to, you know, like Buddhas, like Hotoke. You know, Fido Mio is Hotoke sama, for example. Amida sama,、uh, Mitaba is also Hotoke sama. Right. But when we go to、uh, shrines, right? When we go to shrines, maybe I show it this way. When we go to shrines, like Japanese shrines, they actually have kami, right? They're actually enshrining kami. And we believe that you know, these kami. Are very powerful, and when we go and pray to them, to the kami, we are not only revering them, we're also you know, afraid that you know, these kami might, might be afraid of something we do, and so you know, that's why we you know, pray to them and say, Oh, please help me, save me. And we, but you know, that's that might be more of a, I don't know, me talking, but I think people in general you know, just show their you know, veterans to the kami. But in reality, they're supposed to be, it's hard to see, it's hard, hard to say what is reality, but in reality, they're supposed to be you know, very powerful and they might harm us too. They not only protect us, but they can harm us too because they're so powerful, right? That's why 
we must you know keep things in you know control sort of we, we must you know communicate with kami in a correct way right and because before buddhism came to japan kami or shinto was very prevalent it's still it is still prevalent people kind of had a hard time you know connecting the dots between buddhism and shintoism and as such kami became really connected to buddhas and buddhas became really connected to kami At one time, sometimes, we believe that there were hotoke, right? And the kamis we showed venerance to is one form of representation of the hotoke, of the Buddha. Right? That was, I think that's my understanding that is, is, uh, is that it was because, you know, um, Basically, the government at that time, you know, back in the sixth century, um, wanted to, you know, almost use a Buddhism in order to stabilize their country and, you know, basically bring peace. And that's why they started to, you know, erect, you know, very great temples. And at that time, it was a really hard deal to, for people to go to temples because they were you know, in the mountains, right? But anyways, it start, started off like that. And at another time, you know, afterwards, people started to believe the other way around, meaning the kamis were actually in the form of hotoke. And this Fugen Bosatsu, in, in a way, is like that. So this is Fugen Bosatsu, but it is also Suwa Daimyojin at the same time. Suwa Daimyojin meaning the Daimyojin of Suwa, right? And Suwa is in Nagano Prefecture, right? It's, it is venerated as the Fugen Bosatsu, but people there have been venerating Sua Daimyojin, the Kami. And at one time, of course, this is a replica of the real statue, the real existing one, but the even the existing one was destroyed. The, I, my understanding is that, is that the upper half was destroyed. And it was, you know, kind of remade by a, you know, Buddhist sculptor, a name, I think, Koshin. Like this. So this statue, of course, is a replica. Is not necessarily, the, the replica's original statue is not even be similar to the very original statue that, that existed a long, long time ago. And Fugen Bosatsu usually do uh, ride on elephants like this, but this elephant is really unique. The, uh, the eyes are unique. Look at the look at the shape of the eyes. And if you look at, I'm going to move my fingers a little bit. If you look at the legs, it is very stable. And look at the mouth too. Right here. So you're looking at a very you know interesting piece that represents Shinbutsu Shugo. The amalgamation of, you know, Kami 
Shintoism and Buddhism in Japan. Even even just growing up, you know, um, we were told by parents to, you know, I think many people um, in in Japan, uh, even if if the household is not religious, they're told, you know, parents tell their children to, oh, you know, you know, say, you know, thank you to kamisama, hotokesama, you know. They actually don't know what exactly they're referring to many times, but you know. But when when they say it's really representative of the fact that Kamisama, you know, Shintoism and Hotokesama, you know, Hotokesama Buddhism, uh, are closely related in Japan, and I think it's uh, this statue is a remarkable representation of how Kamisama and Hotokesama are venerated in Japan, and how it is venerated. Yeah. So, as always, this is, this is a very interesting piece. Uh, I mean, my, I might talk more about Fugen Bosatsu in the future and using maybe another, by showing another different Fugen Bosatsu statue. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And as always, um, I'll put the link to this statue in the description below. And as always, I thank you for watching this video. Um, it's a great pleasure. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.